Glad to have Corey Williams on the show. Corey, Arkansas assistant basketball coach who uh, played Freddie Sutton for a couple of years at Oklahoma State. Coach Williams, really appreciate you calling in. How are you today? Doing well. How are you guys? We're doing good. Doing good. So, um, let's just, I mean, make it simple. How are you feeling today, uh, a couple of days after Coach Sutton passed, uh, you know, knowing what you know about him and, and, uh, and, and, what these la- what the last few months has been like for him? It's a sad day in terms of you know him not being around, but it's uh it's also a glorious day that he get a chance to to be with his number one fan, Miss Sutton, uh, in heaven. And uh, you know, Coach meant a lot to a lot of people. Uh, just hearing his calls on my birthday, um, and then me and him talking. You know, when I was at Stetson, it was interesting. And, you know, I, I got fired at Stetson, and uh, I would call him, and, and I would complain to him about my defense. I would always say, Coach, I cannot get these guys to play defense like we did at, at Oklahoma State. And he would always say, you know what you're doing, just keep doing it, keep doing it. And, uh, you know, I never got them to play like they played at Oklahoma State. That's why they fired me. You know, Coach Williams, it really sounds, and I never had a chance to meet Eddie Sutton, but when I hear you talk about him, when I hear a lot of the other players that came through Arkansas, Kentucky, Oklahoma State, it seems to me that Coach Sutton was a fantastic one-on-one communicator. Exactly from what you're saying here, you wanted to always stay in touch with him. Was that a thing that stood out about his ability to communicate with people one-on-one? Yeah, not only could he communicate, but he, he really he really cared. He remembered your your birthday. He remembered your the anniversary. He would always remind you, make sure you love your bride. That was important to him. And he would say, I love you. And uh you knew he meant it. And uh he cared. He cared. He cared about his guys. And he had a heart that was as as big as a an ocean, you know, and he just, he loved on us, and he pushed us, we are better men because of him, uh, it was hard, some days it was extremely hard, but at the end of the day, you know, you when you get a little bit older, you appreciate what he took you through, and it made you a better person, but he, he loved us, that's all he did, he just loved on us like a father. You know, and you, and you played for, for two head coaches during your time at Oklahoma State, Leonard Hamilton and Eddie Sutton. And I wonder, what was that like? What was that first year like with Coach Sutton coming in to his alma mater and and uh, and inheriting that roster and, and, and working with you guys? Well, you know, I didn't know Coach Sutton. So I didn't know what type of guy he was. And I always tell people, so when he got there, he would arrange for us to have a team meeting. Well, I decided to skip the team meeting to go have some ice cream. Me and Daryl Alexander. You know, I said, well, you know, I, I'll tell him that when he got some ice cream, it'll be fine. And so uh, he called me in the office and said, uh, Corey, let me talk to you a minute. I said, yes, sir. He said, where were you at last night? He <laughs> told I, uh, I, I went to some ice cream. And he said it just as calmly as he could. He said, this is your first and last meeting you missed, or you won't be here. And I knew right then and there. <laughs> That this guy here do not play. He don't have to worry about me missing anything else. And from that point on, I was on time, always on time. Speaking to Arkansas assistant coach Corey Williams, and coach, you just you, I mean, after your time at Oklahoma State, you went on and played professionally for a short time, but then you returned to Oklahoma State as a student assistant in '94. And I was just kind of struck. There's not many coaches that get their first or their 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 during the rookie year part of their coaching tenure. You got to learn under one of the best head coaches in college basketball history, despite how long it took oh, to finally get into the Hall of Fame. But just talk about the, you learned so much from him as a player. But what did you learn specifically from him as a coach when you were beginning your coaching uh, career? Oh, oh God, he was so organized. He was very organized, very detailed, and you know he knew. You know, sometimes as a coach, you, you're not sure what you're doing. He was extremely confident in what he was doing. He knew that his system worked. There was no if and buts about it. And I just remember in practice, 
Back then when I was a student assistant, he would just tell me, coach, talk to him. And, uh, 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 you know, just push him. And so I, that's, how, that's all I did at practice. I would be, keep your head up, keep your head up. The guys on the rim, hey, follow through. Make sure you follow through on your shot. That's all I did in practice. But he wanted me to do that. And uh, that year we went to the Final Four. And it was amazing. He got on stage, I think, at the Garth Brook concert. And uh, he said how important I was to that staff. And here I am, a student assistant, and he didn't treat me like that. He treated me like I was one of the assistant coaches, and he felt like my role was that important. He just had a way of making you feel special. And as I, as I, as I grew with him, I would always go to his office, and we would talk about subjects that I knew would he'd be controversial to him, and he would be like, oh, they are not. I said, Coach, it's a lot of cheat going on in basketball. It's not that much. And we would have these debates, and we would be laughing. And I would be laughing on the inside because our relationship had went full circle. And, uh, you know, I could talk to him on a on now a little bit different level than I did as a player. But but he, he's a special man. He's always been special to me, always to my family. And uh, I am the man who I am today. And the coach I am today because he had a, a footprint in my life, and I appreciate that. Well, I think as a young Razorback fan myself, I mean, I, and I've known Eddie Sutton, but just during this time, especially when he got nominated into the Hall of Fame, and especially now, the impact that he's made on so many, and I mean, I look at it from a Razorback perspective, but on you and different, I mean, and we were talking at the beginning of the show, the legacies that he left at Creighton, Arkansas, Oklahoma State, and Kentucky, every each four of those spots, he left a lasting legacy better. I know we were talking with Arkansas. Arkansas wouldn't be where it was today without Eddie Sutton. And I was just curious from your standpoint because you played for him and now you're kind of reaping the benefits of a, a great position here at Arkansas. What's the overall legacy you think that uh, Eddie Sutton leaves? Well, you know, for me, that's why it was so hard for me. To un- I couldn't understand why he wasn't in the Hall of Fame. I just could not understand. And I know mistakes were made in his life, but you know what? We all have made mistakes. You know, it's a good scripture in the Bible that said we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, so we all made mistakes. But I looked at the impact that he had on people's lives, how lives were changed, how he, how he, how he loved those kids. And you look at the guys that played for him and see him, and they're successful now in business and, and coaching and, and what have you. That's the measure of a man. Not, not, I mean, the wins and losses, yeah, they stand out, but who lies did he affect? He has a countless of people who lies he affected. And, uh, you know, for me to come to Arkansas knowing that he coached here, I mean, it's like, it's like looking to God and saying, Lord, you know what you're doing. Here I am, I played for the guy, and now I'm back where, 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 where one of the schools he, he started at, the University of Arkansas. So for me, it was an honor. And to see this, the, the, our practice facility uh, named after him, the Eddie Sutton gym, I mean, I just, those are the things that, that makes you, uh, I mean, that that, that, that that makes you special. And like my wife said to me, she said, that's how you want to be remembered. You want to be remembered like he's remembered, as an unbelievable coach. But, but more importantly, he was an unbelievable person. Yeah. And I'm with you on, I have no idea why it took so long for him to get into the Hall of Fame. It's actually insulting when you think about it. Um, I want to ask about, it's, uh, what, 13 days until uh, student-athletes can come back to campus. So I know, you know, you you and the the rest of the staff have got to be at least excited to see your guys in person with, you know, certain restrictions and and whatever. What, What do you expect the next couple of weeks for the coaching staff to be like as you guys prepare for the return of your players to campus? Well, I just think right now what we're trying to do is just, uh, Coach Musselman has us getting everything in order. You know, we got recruiting that we need to do. We got, uh, you know, some preparation things that we need to do as they, they, they come back to campus. But, but just to see their face for a change, it's been a long time, a long time coming. And uh, the interaction that, it, that takes place between coaches and, and players, you know, we're, we're, we're looking forward to that. But it's, this has been something that you couldn't have dreamed of happening. And uh, now we, we have to get through it. And, and it's certainly good to just kind of see some light at the end of the tunnel. 
I can't let you go without a quick last dance question because you are one of the guys who played for those for, for those Bulls teams, one of the championships teams you were on, I know. Are you are you glad the thing's over? Because that was all anybody could talk about for like for like for like a month and a half. And I'm sure you got asked about it over and over and over again. Are you happy that the last dance is done? <laughs> you know what? I would say I'm happy because it was I tell you what, it was exciting knowing that on Sunday, Saturday on Sunday night you you, you were gonna watch the last dance. I mean I was gonna watch it. And, you know, uh the cool thing about it is you know, they had some clips. Now, you had you couldn't leave if you wanted to see me on those clips. But I was on some of those clips. <laughs> you, know? you had to stay and they see your eyes were glued to the TV. But the cool thing is I was on those clips and my, 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 my daughter and my son was going crazy. There you go, Dad. There you go. I said, yep. I played. I played. And, uh, but it was just cool for people to see who he is as a person, what made him kind of be who he, he is. Uh, as as an athlete, and what made him tick as a basketball player? I thought it was I thought it was pretty awesome, uh, especially in, in this this time where we didn't have very much to look at on TV. And uh, so it's like get your popcorn ready and let's look at the last day. And I was just hoping and praying that I was going to be on a couple of those clips so I could at least say, "Hey, I made the last day cut." That's right. That's don't awesome. blink, don't blink or you miss it, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Blake, you Coach Williams, really appreciate you dialing in. Thanks for your time. Uh, good luck getting everything ready for the guys to return to campus, and we we'll look forward to talking with you again soon. Thanks, Coach. Well, I should sure appreciate, I, I sure appreciate you guys. And uh, like I said before, Coach Sutton was a hell of a coach. But I, I'm telling you, he was, a, he, was, he, he was a hell of a hell of a hell of a person. So may he rest in peace. You got it, Man, brother. Thanks for your thoughts. That's uh, Arkansas. Assistant basketball coach Corey Williams joining us here on Halftime.